Wondering how I scheduled my beta readers and how I sent out my story to them? This is the third video in a series where I'm sharing my personal experience with my first round of betas in the hopes that sharing my process and what I've learned will help you decide how you want to run your rounds of beta readers. If you want to know how to find and pick the best beta readers for your book, you're definitely going to want to check out my first two videos, which I'll link below and in the cards. But in this video, we're going to focus on how I prepped for my beta readers, answering questions like, how should I send my books? to beta readers? Should I send the whole thing or in chunks? Should I use Word docs, Google docs, or even beta books? Personally, how did it go for me and would I have changed anything? We'll also answer questions like how should I set up a schedule for my beta readers? How much time should I give my beta readers to read a certain amount of words and get feedback back to me? And how reliable can I expect my beta readers to be? How can I make sure that I get feedback on time? To help you out with this, I'm actually going to show you my list of expectations and reminders that I sent to my beta readers so you can have an idea of what you might want to send your beta readers as well. If you want to know more of how I collected and organized this feedback and how I processed it after I received it, definitely make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell so you don't miss those videos when they come out. As always, huge shout out to my awesome patrons who requested this series and sent in a bunch of great questions for me to answer, including some wonderful people on Instagram as well. Okay, so to answer a bunch of your guys' questions on this topic, I wanted to show you the actual email I sent to my beta readers that set up sort of the expectations and how I was going to run the rounds. And I'm actually going to be giving this template to my patrons so they can copy it and edit it and use it for their own use. So if you would like this one as well as the one that I sent out to those that I didn't pick for the first round of beta reading, but I said, hey, I already have enough betas for this round, but if you would like to do the next round, please let me know. This is the email that I sent them. So again, Again, if you would like those templates, you can check us out on patreon.com. But right now I'm just going to walk you through it and use this to answer some of your guys' questions. So the first thing I said to my betas was just, hi friend, if you're receiving this email, thank you so much for submitting my beta reader survey. That survey I talked about in the last video, if you haven't seen it yet. I am very interested in having you become one of my betas for this round. If you'd like to move forward as my beta reader, here are some additional details and important reminders. Please read thoroughly and let me know if you have any questions. And this next section is pretty much what I sent them with a few fill in the blanks. And again, if you have this template, you can cater it to whatever you'd like to say. But here is what I told my betas. Starting on a certain beta reading date, I will send you two documents per week. The first will be a few chapters of the book, which was a PDF, if you were wondering, and the other two will have the questionnaire for each chapter. So if you're wondering if I sent my book out in chunks or a whole, I decided to send it out in chunks of a few chapters at a time. There's quite a few reasons I decided to do it this way, but the biggest reasons were that I didn't want to just give anyone my whole manuscript. If I sent it out in chunks, then I got to make sure that that person was actually giving me feedback and not just taking my manuscript for whatever they wanted to use it for. My other thought was I really wanted to go through the process with my beta readers where they would read certain sections at a time and I could really get feedback in real time of what they thought of each section. So I could gauge pacing, what they thought of character development, what kind of predictions they had while reading, and all of this kind of stuff I'll walk you guys through when I show you my beta reader questionnaire in the next video in this series. I also decided to do this in Word doc form with PDFs for the actual manuscript, and then the questionnaire was in a Word doc that I emailed to them every week. And I did think about doing Google Docs, but just for me, I really enjoyed getting the Word docs back and then organizing them in folders. And I also didn't really want them to give me line by line sort of reactions or feedback within the manuscript so I didn't really need that either. I felt like the questionnaire would definitely be enough and having thoughts and suggestions throughout the manuscript was just going to be too overwhelming. I had already done that with my critique partners and I didn't feel like I needed that for my beta readers. Though I did ask my betas if they would like to they could dialogue with me on Instagram direct message as they were reading the manuscript and then they could let me know in real time their reactions, their questions, which I really enjoyed doing with a few beta readers that took advantage of that. Another resource I just want to shoot out there is called Beta Books, and it's actually a website that you can sign up and enroll your beta readers, load your manuscript, ask them questions. My friend and patron JJ Otis has used this service and really loves it. You should definitely check out her Instagram where she has a highlight where she goes through some of the features, but some of the features are paid, and when I looked into it, too many of the features that I wanted to use were paid, and I just want 
wanted to do this first round without having to pay for anything. So I went with Word Docs. The next thing I told my betas was this questionnaire was going to have eight to 10 questions per chapter asking about their impressions and thoughts on the story plot, characters, scenes, etc. You will enter your answers into this document. Again, if you wanna see the exact questions that I asked my betas, I'm going to show you that in the next video. I did wanna give them a little direction on how to answer these questions. So then I said, I really want you to have fun with your answers and please be honest, totally gush about what you loved and also honestly critique what you didn't like or what wasn't working for you. And don't worry about being formal or proofreading your answers. This isn't a book report. Pretend we're sitting down to chat about the book over coffee. Have fun, use emojis, be yourself. I also wanted to encourage them this next point though. I do ask that you always try to tell me why you feel the way you do with each question. Feel free to make your answers as long as you want, but at least a short paragraph for each question is ideal so I can get a full picture of what I should keep and what I might need to change. Then finally, I said, just a reminder that this version of my work in progress is just that, a work in progress. I'm still working on getting it to the best place it can be, but there will be weak weaknesses in the story, some of which I know of, and some of which you will point out all of which is why I need your help. You guys will be my first betas. So though mine was a third draft, I told them to expect roughness, if that's a word, be kind, but honest, and please no critiques on grammar or spelling and no line editing, unless a mishap causes confusion and you wanna seek clarity about what I meant to say, of course. I felt like it was really important to give all of this kind of direction up front so my betas would know what kind of feedback I was really looking for. Again, typically you don't look for grammar and spelling and line editing because chances are you're going to do some major developmental edits after you get feedback. So any line editing or grammar stuff might not even be applicable once you change a bunch of things later. And I wanted them to have fun with this, but also remember to give me details so it would be really constructive and helpful when I went to go edit. Now let's just talk about how this actually went before I go on to the next section. But for me, I really enjoyed giving my manuscript in chunks for some of the reasons I've already mentioned. And I really loved all the details my beta readers were able to give me, but even with just nine betas in the end, I do have so much feedback to go through. But for me in the future and you guys listening right now, it really all depends on what your goals are. Are you at a state with your book where you need those nitty gritty details for each and every chapter? And that's what's going to be most helpful for you. And for me, I thought it would be, so that's why I put together a questionnaire for each chapter. But as I got to later parts of the manuscript and I knew that I had some major developmental stuff going on that I needed feedback for, I actually ended up giving them more than a few chapters at a time, maybe like five or six, and giving them one questionnaire for the entire section. Again, I'll show you both kinds of questionnaires in the next video. I don't regret how I did this first round. I think it was a really good learning experience. Again, I have so much feedback, but I do think that in the future, I might give larger chunks. This way, my beta readers can just read straight through a whole section, maybe even subdividing the book into quarters or the three act structure, and then giving one questionnaire for the whole section. I think once I started doing that with the ending chapters, my betas really enjoyed just reading a whole section at a time and then reacting to that section in full. But I really encourage you guys overall to just try one avenue and see how it works for you. And you can always do another round of betas and try something else the next time. For those of you that were wondering more about scheduling, here were some notes that I gave my betas about that. First, I said that they would have a week to read the chunk of chapters that I gave them, and then they would email the questionnaire back to me with their answers by the following week. So like a Tuesday to a Tuesday, Friday to a Friday. I did tell them no need to send back the actual chapters because again, they weren't doing line by line reactions or feedback. I also said, please try to be on time, but if it's looking like you'll have to submit a bit late, just let me know. Once I've received your answers, I will send you the last batch. Some of you were asking, did people actually get stuff back to you on time? And down here, I did say that I gave them about 30 to 40 pages at a time. So I think it really does depend on how many words you are giving them to read and how many questions you're asking them to answer in each questionnaire. But for most people, they really were able to read that 30 to 40 page chunk and then answer a questionnaire for each chapter in that week time frame with a few people that usually needed a day or so to catch up. I did send weekly emails as just like a, hey, here's the next section. Just a reminder that it's due on 
this date. And I think the first couple weeks I sent like a couple days before things were due to just say, hey guys, just a reminder that the chapters are due on this date. If you need an extra day or so, just let me know. And I just tried to make this really obvious that I understand that they have real lives and that they're doing this for free. And I wasn't gonna be upset if things were late, but I just wanted to stay in the know. Communication is key, you guys. And that's what really helped me with those few betas that did need a few extra days. And if someone missed the deadline and didn't let me know, I was sure to just send a gentle email of, hey, I hope everything's okay. I just went in assuming that they had forgotten or life had happened and asked them when they thought they could get the questionnaire back to me. And usually it was the answer of, oh my gosh, I totally lost track of time or this family thing happened. And then we moved on from there. You might have people that totally ghost you. And in that case, that's why I send out chapters in chunks so that someone doesn't just disappear with my whole manuscript. And if you have that second group of people that are interested in beta reading but they couldn't fit in this round, then you could always ask them to fill in. As far as days of the week, I also just wanted to put out there that I did start sort of sending stuff and expecting stuff back on a Tuesday, but ended up finding that, at least for me and my betas, Fridays worked really well. That personally gave me enough time to tweak anything before I sent out the next round of chapters. And also a good number of my betas really enjoyed getting chapters on Friday, having the weekend to read, think through the questions, and then maybe take a few more days to answer questions. And once I started doing Friday to Friday, I actually got some questionnaires like Saturday night or Sunday night with the rest of them coming later in the week and up to the due date. Some other notes I just sent them to as well that you might want to consider saying is I said, I also ask that you please do not talk about the book with anyone else, including other betas. You don't want to accidentally spoil something for a beta who hasn't read a certain section or influence each other's reactions or thoughts about the story. I've heard some people really love using chat groups like Discord to run their rounds of betas, and I think they had different channels for each individual beta. And I actually considered using something like Discord, but my main concern was that people would influence each other or might accidentally spoil something. There's definitely ways that you could get around that, but for me, that's why I didn't go that route. And when I emailed them, I blind copied everyone, so they didn't necessarily know who the other betas were and wouldn't accidentally start chatting about the book together. I wanted their reactions and feedback to be totally their own, so I would get the most authentic feedback. I also said you can definitely mention online that you're beta reading, don't forget to tag me, but obviously don't share any screenshots or quote any part of the manuscript other than the title page, that was fine, or any other inside information I share because, well, spoilers. Again, I said the total timeline commitment, this process will go on each week during, and you would just say from like May to June or however long you think you're gonna have it. I actually ended up needing more time than this, so once I got past that timeline, I did need to reach out to my betas and say, hey, I think it's gonna be like another month, is that okay with you? And most of them were, and then I just added, I don't want to overwhelm you guys by giving you too much at once, so I'm looking to send about 30 to 40 pages at a time, and you can put whatever your page number is in this section. Then I really love how some people that talk about beta readers put in this preliminary first week. So I did this as well. I just said the first week will be preliminary for both of us. This means during your first week's reading or after I receive your first questionnaire, if one of us feels that something is not working out on either end, we can then part ways, no hard feelings. For instance, if after reading the first batch you realize my story is not for you or that the commitment is more than you expected, please don't feel bad about letting me know as soon as possible and I will pass your spot on to someone else. This just gave both me and my betas a way out if something wasn't working and I just set it up front so it wouldn't be a surprise. Then I said if you'd like to continue after the first week, the expectation is that you'll stick with me until the end. But again, if a life emergency or something comes up, you can of course always step away from being a beta. I just ask that you please let me know that you're gonna do so. Basically, don't ghost me. And my betas, again, were great. None of them ghosted me, although there were a few that had life stuff and we just discussed that and moved on from there. Finally, I added a disclaimer about copyright and I just said, disclaimer, my work is copyrighted. By reading my work, you are agreeing to neither share, copy, discuss, or otherwise distribute this work unless given express permission by me, the author. This is where you would put your name. And then I just included this link that Bethany Atazada was so nice enough to provide for me from the US Copyright Office that basically says, once 
once something is written, even if it's not formally copyrighted, it is copyrighted by the US Copyright Office. Then I finally wrapped up by saying, phew, so sorry if that was a lot, but I like to be thorough. Again, after reading through all of this carefully, please email me back ASAP to let me know if you have any further questions or if you're ready to officially be a beta. If you decide not to commit at this point again, no hard feelings. Obviously, you were one of my first picks, but there are a bunch of others that would be able to step up if you decide you'd like to pass or wait for a future round. And again, this is why I talked about in my first video why it's so important to have a bigger group of betas so that if someone does step out, if you want to add an additional person, you have a group to pick from. Then I just close with, in either case, looking forward to hearing from you, and this is where you would put your name. Again, if you'd like to get these templates for your own beta reader process, definitely consider joining us on Patreon, where you also get a whole archive and other resources for your writing journey. I'm super excited to get these last few beta reader videos out to you guys. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you have any other questions or tips, definitely let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, you can view the rest of the videos in this series in a playlist linked in the description below, or check out one of these two writing-related videos, and we'll see you there.